Thank you so much, Scott, for being with us. My first question to you would be your initial reaction to this sell-off today. Uh, you know, Scott, I'm a little bit taken back with it because, you know, I thought we were in the midst of a bear market bounce, and we know those can be pretty vicious. Uh, to the upside, but uh, you know it it is continuing the narrative that you know I believe is unfolding, which is that given the aggressive posture of the Federal Reserve, uh, you know we're going to be meaningfully lower uh, this year in in stocks before we find a bottom uh, because the Fed has made it clear that they do not have a put uh, on the stock market. Well, they may have a put on the bond market, which hasn't given it a reason to re-engage the put, I, I suppose. Look, you have a new note out today, and it's the impetus for us to have you on, where you discuss a possible collision, that collision being between the cooling economy and a very aggressive Fed tightening, as you, as you just said. Um, trying to avoid this collision really is the ultimate goal, can we? I don't think so, and, and I'll tell you why. I, I, I really believe that uh, the Fed thinks that the neutral rate is much higher than it is. And of course, the neutral rate is the, the, you know, the perfect nirvana sh short-term rate. Um, and if you look at the research we've done, um, we would expect the neutral rate to be coming down pretty aggressively over the course of the summer. Uh, by the time we get to the mid part of the year, maybe into the third quarter, um, you would think that the appropriate uh, policy rate would be somewhere uh, in the area of one and three quarter percent. You know, Scott, they've made it clear to us that uh, we're, we're going to be at one and three quarter percent by July. I mean, I think a 50 basis point hike has been advertised for the next two meetings, and uh, they believe that uh, the neutral rate is somewhere higher. So um, yeah, I think at that point, uh, the Fed will be an overkill. Uh, the weakness in the economy will dominate, and uh, you know, we could be setting ourselves up for you know, a season of pain here, especially going mm. into September and October. This, this sounds to me like you think the Fed at this point is more aggressive than you initially thought it, it, it might be. And I say that because I remember our last conversation, Scott, in which you painted a picture in which you have almost a two-year runway here before you, you go to recession. And stocks could go up in the first year of that runway until it gets real, until the Fed really steps on the gas and you have a recession come closer, and then obviously all, all bets are off. Has that view changed? It has, absolutely, Scott. You've got a great memory. I hand it to you. Um, the, uh, I mean, look, I'm a great believer that you have to let the data tell you what's happening. And I had the opportunity to go to the Central Bank Conference at the Hoover Institution uh, a week ago Friday, and it was really interesting to hear um, the you know, central bankers talking about um, how concerned they are about inflation, how high they think the neutral rate is, or how high they'll have to raise rates to get inflation under control. And, you know, at the same time, um, not re reflecting any concern whatsoever for the stock market. You know, remember that it was just, you know, six months ago or so that the Fed was telling us that, that rates were going to you know, stay close to the zero bound for a protracted period of time. Um, the aggressive pivot on the part of the Fed at least caught me by surprise. And, um, you know, I think that uh, given that they don't sense that there's a real level of panic in the market and uh, until we get something that is threatening to financial stability, uh, they seem quite comfortable to watch the stock market go down as long as in their mind it's an orderly decline.